I'm Brian and you're here to watch this video because you want to get things done. So let's get things done. We're working on a 2003, you look on your emissions tag and you see what year it is, 2003 5.3 liter. This vehicle has a P0449 and also a P0455. The 455 you see that CNF means confirmed, the other one PND means pending and this is just a big gross vacuum leak. And you'll usually get these the same because once your vent uh, valve dies you get a leak. It'll say uh, leak detected, gross leak, backslash, no flow. So let's see why that is. First of all on this vehicle on the 03 it's a little harder than some of the other ones in some respects in that it's right between the bed and the cab. It's mounted up in there and you've got a little hose system set up like this. And then this goes back down around to your EVAP canister, like that. So the EVAP canister, respectively, is about a foot and a half, 18 inches or so, to the front of the truck up here. So you find that, undo that first, and then this goes up around the tank, up over the tank, and you've got your little thing bolted in there with a 13 millimeter bolt. So how do you know if it's bad and what do you look for? Um, well, this is the old one, and it's bad. And this is the new one, and it's good. So let's show you just a little bit about, so you can get out of here if you just want to do this test real quick. I'll do that first, and you can sign off and go about your business. So you got a two-wire plug here. You can see the two pins uh, right there. And basically, uh, with those two pins, you got a ground and a positive. The ground is the one that, is, if you point this to the ground, then that's the ground next to it. So you hit the little thing uh, with power, with power probe. I'll put a link in the description for one of these. You need one of these if you're doing anything like this. You can hear that clicking. That's what a good one sounds like. And here's how you test it. Put your mouth on it and blow. Clean it off, of course, first. So you should be able to blow through. Let's get rid of the sound, shall we? So I said, I said, so you hear it click you know that it's activated so all the time it just sits there on the end of your uh, canister your charcoal canister and you can blow right through it this way on a hot day when you're evaporating your stuff it'll uh, go through it when you put power to it it should sound like this so that's a good one here's what the bad one does Point it to the ground, put your ground on the bottom one because that's where the ground lives. Positive goes here. So far so good, it's still venting like it's supposed to. And I'm out of breath. Problem is it doesn't close. So now you know how to test it, you know where it is, go for it. This is your uh, canister vent valve, vent solenoid. So new one, old one, you know, these look pretty much the same. There's variations of these where they'll have a little snorkel that goes up to somewhere else and terminates, but this has that little uh, vent already in it. So but this is what goes bad, these little solenoids, they don't shut off. This is your purge control solenoid. You can see the green cap. You can actually unscrew this, put something on it, and evacuate it to see if it holds pressure and use something independent from the vehicle. Um, but basically all it is is it's just a little two wire solenoid it opens and it closes and most of the time it's closed because you don't want a vacuum leak um, you can see the two wires on the back side I'll be gentle because I know this is a GM and their wiring wasn't great in 05, 03 uh, but basically it just sucks from here to the charcoal canister here's the fuel tank and then you have two lines coming to this point here and you have one of the lines that says purge and you just saw the other end of that with the green cap it goes to the purge solenoid and then the other one says tank or two tank or something of that nature and it basically captures any expanding gas any gas that's expanding is going to be more than obliged to get pushed through that skinny little tube into the charcoal canister and you see it goes in the bottom of the charcoal canister and it wants to go up that's what they do um, so it goes up and gets caught in there and then anything else um, is going to come 
out this other side here to the vent valve. And you saw this out of the vehicle, so now you're seeing it in the vehicle. So where is the vent valve? You see it goes up to the split between the cab and the bed, and then it just heads this way on this one. This is a 2003. And then there's the valve right there. You can see the other end of the hose going to it. You can see the little bolt that bolts it to uh, the frame mount for the bed. And then there's a plug. You can see the wire right there coming off the wire harness. And then there's your split between your cab and your bed. So here is how your EVAP system would look if you were to just spread it out on a whiteboard. Now what is an EVAP system? EVAP stands is just an abbreviation for your evaporative system. Um, gasoline or hydrocarbons in this case, uh, in gasoline form, they evaporate really easily. And that's why we like them. That's why we call it gas because it's so easy to atomize it, which is so great for uh, you know your combustion process. You get away with having a lower compression ratio. You don't have to have a big heavy uh, cast iron engine that uh, you know, can handle the heat like diesels do. It's just a really simple way to have a whole bunch of energy in a small place and be able to dispense it. It starts really well and it's cold. It's awesome. But the downside to gasoline stuff is that it evaporates and you get hydrocarbons and it pollutes the environment and makes people sick. And so what we want to do is we want to have a way to capture these things and then be able to use them. Now your engine has exhaust that comes out of the cylinder heads and they put it through your catalytic converter but beyond that it just really uh, cleans it up and then ultimately what we want coming out the tailpipe is you know we have hydrocarbons and then from our intake we have a whole bunch of O2 going in you know we got 14.7 to one ratio fuel to air. You have a lot of this going in, have a little bit of this going in, and then out the tailpipe, all that we should have is H2O and O2, CO2. I'm sorry. If you have O2, you've got an incomplete burn, something's not right there. So you should have carbon dioxide and water coming out the tailpipe. That's all we're looking for. And the inputs are hydrocarbons and oxygen. So these hydrocarbons, what happens is this has to be able to expand. You got a nice hot day, you got sunshine beating down, everybody's got their shades on. <laughs> We're having a great time, but it causes your gas tank to expand. You don't want your tank to pop because then all these hydrocarbons push into the environment. So you got to be able to have that thing expand and contract, and then at the same time, you want to be able to capture those and reuse them. We don't want to have a leak out the gas tank, you know, this way on the ground because we'd be wasting money. So why are we going to waste this? So the geniuses um, in the automotive industry have come up with a way to capture it. Charcoal's depleted of hydrocarbons. It wants to get all the hydrocarbons it can. Nom 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 nom. It's like your nephew at the family reunion. Are you going to finish that? You're going to finish whatever's left over, whatever's expanding out charcoal's going to get it and it'll hold on to it until the time comes to send it into the engine. Now let's simplify this a little bit so that we're not so cluttered and noisy here. So we've talked about the combustion process, everything goes through, it's nice and clean. Let's simplify this down a little bit again. So we have a purge control solenoid, I'll draw an arrow to that. And then we have a vent valve. And these two work together on either ends of this thing to be able to get all of the hydrocarbons from here in your charcoal canister to here in your intake. Now whenever you draw a vacuum on uh, liquids in general, water is a real good example, uh, liquid gasoline is a really good example, whenever you have a vacuum on them, they tend to evaporate. And so when you use your charcoal canister and you use a vacuum here, this is all a closed system. No, wait, if it's closed, it's going to pop. So how are we going to fix that? That's where your vent valve comes in. That's what this video is about. So your vent valve will close on one end. Your vacuum purge solenoid will open on the other end. So it's pulling all of this through into your intake and burning it off. So you're running just a little bit rich, but your engine can detect that through your oxygen sensors or fuel sensors, whatever you want to call them nowadays. 
But basically, when this closes and this opens, it draws a vacuum on these things. And when that happens, all of your hydrocarbons are going to come out of here. You see a dotted line here, and you see a straight line here. The old GM tanks, you had those three prongs coming out of them. You had uh, fuel pressure, fuel return, and then the middle one was your evacuation, your purge control solenoid. So what happens when this won't close is that it's just a big vacuum leak all the way to here. You get a little bit of fuel, you know, like say you're testing for a vacuum leak on your intake manifold and you're using propane or something, you got a little propane thing and you're watching uh, the readout on the tailpipe reader or you're watching the readout that you have um, on your oxygen sensors and you're seeing if you're rich or lean. Um, basically that's what you have, is you have a vacuum leak that just has this big long detour out to the open. It's not closing. Now if that doesn't close, you've got a little vacuum pressure sensor. It's just like a MAP sensor. You know, oftentimes they're located in the top of the fuel sending unit. But this will see that it's not pulling vacuum when the computer says open sesame, close sesame, and then it watches to see what happens with the vacuum. Um, if the numbers don't line up in the computer because you're not getting a good uh, vacuum pressure in the tank, it's going to know that either somebody left the fuel cap off and it's just sucking here, or this is wide open. But it's, if you get a 449, that's usually a voltage related to your vent valve uh, not responding properly. Um, but that's how your system works. You have all these co codes, you know, like you know 442 or 44 whatever saying that there's a vacuum leak or a vacuum problem um, on your trouble codes. So this is how it works if you want to know this big fat one. This big fat one's the one that goes to the vent valve. You've got another one that either goes to the fuel tank or you sometimes you'll have several of them. You'll have them go into the fuel tank and then you'll have them dot 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 like this case. You have one that goes up to your purge solenoid. So you'll have one that's labeled purge and you'll have another one it's labeled tank tank or fuel tank or something like that and then you'll have a big fat one that goes to the vent valve now why do you got to have it so fat out here to the vent valve well you don't want to break anything like we said and uh, it just helps with the whole fluid dynamics of things questions if you have any leave them in the comments below there are a lot of people watching my videos that are smarter than I am I'm a pretty smart guy but there are just like some seriously seriously smart guys that watch so you know sometimes they'll answer your question before I can and that's great and uh, then I can learn from them too uh, but this is this is what we're doing here and that's why this is important and that's why the check engine light comes on um, that's when it works, how it works, uh, why it works, and how, I think I covered the who, what, who is it, it's a vent valve, I think we got them covered. So, thanks for watching my video, be sure to subscribe, you know, I put a lot of work into these, I really plan it out, go into a lot of detail. I could do a 3 minute video, or a 30 second, 45 second video and get the advertising from that, or I could really try to help people and try to create as much content that's useful as possible. Now what's up with the snorkel? So this is a mask. This is me being a cartoonist and then this is a snorkel that's optional. Sometimes you'll have a vent valve that has a snorkel built right into the end of it and other times you'll have them up on a thing. This is the earlier years, later years they wouldn't have in a snorkel that's up higher. And oftentimes when you replace that you get that with it. Thanks for watching.